Hi, my name is Mark Johnston and I do STEM education. I'm excited today because I am seeing all kinds of posts on Twitter and Facebook that teachers are finally upgrading from the old VEX Cortex 2.0 to the VEX V5 system. And that's got me all kinds of excited. So today I'm going to bring to you a very beginner's introductory guide. All right. There's a lot of teachers out there, a little bit of anxiety about a new system, especially if you've been old and using that old system for years and years. Now you're going to have to learn something new, right? Don't worry. It's really not that bad. It's actually going to be a lot of fun. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. You're probably very familiar with something that looks like this. Uh, don't worry about this little thing. I'll tell you about what that is a little later. Anyway, uh, this is the Vex Cortex. And let me tell you, this is old. Uh, it was great when it came out. And um, there's still a lot of great things you can do with it. And I still like it personally. I have fond memories of it. I know that's not the case for a lot of teachers. And this uh, Vex uh, system has been heavily used in the Project Lead the Way community. If you're a PLTW teacher, what's up, my peeps? If you are not and uh, you're just a student or a robotics teacher, then this video relates to you as well. But I am going to be referencing some PLTW stuff. Um, don't worry about that. Anyway, uh, I'm also excited about all this because if you want to have a competitive robotics team, you are going to need to switch to V5. That's why I'm wearing my, can you see it? My Vex Worlds, hey, there it is. Vex Worlds shirt, event partner, <laughs> right there, REC event partner, because I want to represent, you know, uh, I've taken a IQ team to Worlds uh, uh, one year and qualified a second year, but uh, due to some crazy thing that was going on in the world, we weren't able to go. So anyway, uh, Let's get to the whole point of the video, which is V5, right? So I have a V5 brain here, and you can see that it's quite a bit bigger. Um, well, maybe not quite a bit. It's about the same thickness, um, but it is a little bit bigger, okay? It uh, has a, a couple different things about it, quite a bit of different things about it, actually. And I can tell that Vex has spent a lot of time listening to criticisms from the Cortex and really trying to make their V5 system um, really, really good. And I think it's possibly going to last, no, probably will last longer than the Cortex did, which is actually saying quite a lot. All right. So let me go ahead and first, let's, let's address what most of you guys have in your classroom. Most of the viewers of this video are probably PLTW teachers. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the PDF of the, the document of the custom upgrade kit. So here is a PDF. It's for, from Project Lead the Way. It's for the PLTW VEX V5 Gateway Custom Upgrade Kit. And that's the uh, part number from, uh, I think, VEX. I downloaded this off the PLTW store. And I believe that the upgrade kit uh, cost of that at this time is around just under a thousand dollars, I believe, which is actually a really good price when you look at it. Okay. Now, if you're like me, you probably missed this the first time you looked at it, or when you looked at an upgrade kit, you probably didn't realize that it actually, each kit comes with two brains. Okay. So two of these brains and two batteries and naturally two chargers and uh, multiple battery clips that you would need to attach the battery and uh, a couple USB cables. Also comes with these flanges. Uh, a lot of people are opening up their boxes and going, what the heck are these? Uh, the flanges I can show you, I actually don't have any with me. I haven't been using them. Um, it's one way you can attach the brain to your robot. Uh, and there's long flanges and short flanges. Uh, then we also have a separate power cable. Okay, the power cable is no longer attached to the battery. It is separate from the battery and from the brain. And then you're getting five smart motors. Five, count them, okay? And when I say smart motors, 
they are 100% smart motors. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about what that means, but you are getting instead of one of these here, I'll put it up here instead of one of these old 393s. Okay. That look like that. Right. Which is a dumb motor has two wires, which means basically just DC power. It's either on or off. And if you are kind of ever get got into any kind of advanced stuff with the old system, then you probably at least recognize this. Um, this is a uh, motion sensor, and you can see there's extra cables there. There's actually a four a uh, four pin connector there as well as the two pin connector. And basically this is a 393 motor where you had to take the top off and attach this motor encoder. Uh, and you had to do quite a bit more configuration and stuff, but that was basically so you could count the revolutions of the motor. Um, so you could know kind of in degrees, how far it's turned, that kind of stuff. Um, so it was quite a process and a lot in, in more money and this didn't come in the PLTW kits um, that so many of you were received funding for, and so it wasn't in your classroom. And so there were these, you know, wacky ideas of wanting to attach a, um, what do you call it, uh, potentiometer to a motor shaft, and then, and then strip it out by accident. All kinds of stuff like that happening. Okay, the smart motor. There's one right there. The smart motor is actually very smart. It has the motor encoder built in already. It actually sends data about like how much electrical current is being drawn so you can control things like speed and torque actually. You can control how, uh, how much the motor will resist or not against any kind of force feedback. It's really very interesting. Also, you can see uh, there, there's this little green window the the motors they sell they sell different cartridges for them um so you can buy those separately there's a red green and blue green is the standard it's kind of the mid-range uh and then of course there's a high torque and then there's a high speed cartridge that you can put in um so you can start your gearing from inside the motor if you uh choose to do so typically that's going to be more for like your co uh, competition folks um, but if you were in the classroom and you did decide you wanted to have uh, the students kind of see something like that, it's just four little tiny Phillips head screws that you unscrew, just like get a little jewelers or sunglasses screwdriver or something. You take that off, the cartridge literally pops out, and you pop in the new one, and you screw it back together. Easy peasy, okay? So, like I said, they are very smart. They are smart motors when they say that, Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, you're going to have uh, all the cables, the V5 smart cables that are needed to connect. Uh, if you're uh, at least as old as I am, then you, I, you'll, re you'll understand when I say they're like a, an old telephone style jack. Uh, if you're familiar with the, the IQ, VEX IQ system, they're very similar. They are not the same, but they are similar. Uh, it's a different RJ jack, but um, the really awesome thing about this is that let's say you have a motor, an old motor, like the old 393s, where the wire, you know, started to break off or uh, the pins busted uh, on it, you know, those little tiny pins broke. And what do you do? Well, you, do you throw it away? Do you tr try to master your electrical skills or what? I, I mean, it's it, it was a tough thing for a lot of teachers, I'll tell you. Um, with this new V5 system, you can order, and it's not actually that expensive. Um, I want to say this tool right here, don't quote me on it. I think it was about 20 bucks. But e even if it was like 50 bucks, it, it would be worth it, okay? This tool right here, and then you buy some cable. Now it looks just like old telephone wire. It really does. Uh, it's got like the the you know four conductor inside. 
uh, it has this little sheath. Well, this tool, you can strip the sheath, you can strip the little wires, you can buy the little tiny jacks. You just basically slip them on and make sure that they're lined up correctly. You put it in here and you crimp it down. You do the same thing the other side and you've made your own custom length cable. You can make as many as you want. You can make them short, make them long. Um, it's, it's really very, very convenient as far as, you know, managing your equipment that is going to get used over and over, especially if it's like PLTW stuff where you're using it in the classroom over and over and over. Maybe you have several classes per day. It's getting plugged and unplugged and it's, it's gonna fail eventually. It's not going to last forever. So this is really great that, uh, we're going to have this ability to do that. It doesn't come in the kit, but again, these things are not that expensive. And so you don't need it right away, but by the time, you know, you're, you're getting into it and you're like, Oh, I could really use a few more cables or different lengths or something. Then, um, you can put in those orders maybe like in a year or two. And I'm letting you know now, so you can just have that in the back of your mind. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stuff that I have with me right now. So here we are. I already showed you the brain. Now the brain comes with a cover. It's a touch screen, but you can't use it unless you take the cover off. Now it's a touch screen. Okay. The brain itself does not have a battery built in or anything. Okay. So you do need a battery cable, okay? And you're gonna need a battery. Now let me tell you how awesome this battery is, okay? First of all, the charger is so much easier, okay? The other end of this is basically just like a DC wall plug, all right? Watch this, I'm about to plug it into charge. There you go, it's charging. And it's flashing telling me the four LEDs, it's telling me it's almost done. Once it's done, the, the LEDs will turn off. I know it's fully charged. I'll unplug it. Okay. Now check this out. I grab my battery and I go, huh, I wonder if this is charged. Press the button on top. Hey, look it, it's fully charged. Now it's not actually fully, fully charged, but it's probably close enough. But if I push it and I get three lights or if I get two lights or one light, it tells me how much how much juice I have gives me some indication of what's going on with this battery, which is great. Um, it has battery. It comes with battery clips that have holes that you can screw onto the structural pieces and then you can clip the battery. Boom, right onto your robot. Real easy. These cables, uh, and I think you can get longer ones, but this cable is pretty, pretty decent sized. Um, so you plug the cable in to the battery, like so, ta-da, okay? And then you plug the cable into the brain, okay? Like so, you can't get it backwards. There you go. Now, you're not a dummy, I'm not a dummy, but it's dummy proof just in case someday we might be a dummy. Okay, so you can't plug it in wrong, so don't worry. Plug it in, okay? As soon as you plug it in, boom, thing comes on. It's awesome. Shows me the battery level. I mean, when I plug this in, I got a flashing light, <laughs> which who knew what that meant, right? I mean, I'm some people out there, some pros were like, oh, if it flashes this many times, or they knew that, but I didn't know that. But here I can see exactly the battery power you can see I already have some programs loaded onto my Cortex right here, or onto my brain. Uh, they're, they're not calling it a Cortex anymore. Uh, Cortex is the architecture of the chip or something that was in the old one, uh, in the old brain. So this new brain, I think it might be ARM. I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to get into the weeds. Again, this is I want this to be beginner and just step by step for you. Okay. Now, if you leave it on uh, for too long and without any activity, it will power down. So it won't just drain the battery till it's done. So if I'm, you know, getting to talking like I normally do here and it turns off, it's it's because it's like, hey, dude, we're not doing anything. I'm going to I'm going to shut down now. All right. Which is great. That's good. OK, uh, let's see. I got a couple of motors. With me. OK, so let's put those over here as well. 
couple smart motors. You're going to have five in your kit. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put that cover back on it. You're also going to have, and I actually, I forgot to mention it on the, uh, on the PDF. You're actually going to have an optical sensor also one V five optical sensor, which the sensors for the V five system. If it says it's a V five sensor, they are amazing. They am seriously, they are really good. Um, really cool. I don't have an optical sensor. I got my stuff uh, like a year ago, year and a half ago for my competition, my competitive teams. And um, that was just not something that I either wasn't available or we just didn't order it. Um, but I did purchase a, I think it is a, um, it's an accelerometer, but it's, but maybe I think it's more than that. It, it can tell basically wherever it is, in space so it can it can tell g forces and motion it's probably an accelerometer but it is very uh good gives really great feedback and information so i'm just going to pretend like this is uh the optical sensor that you would have and so we can just kind of simulate your whole setup process here um Another thing that you might have, I'm, I don't see it in the kit there, but you are going to have some old sensors. Okay. Your old sensors are still good. Okay. Your, your, you know, the three wire, uh, connectors and you might be looking at this brain going like, well, where do they plug in? Well, right there on the side, they plug in right there on the side. And so probably in a subsequent video, we'll get into programming. We'll, we'll use some of the, uh, we'll definitely use the new stuff. We'll use some of the old stuff. And I know this looks like, this looks like a, um, this is an updated bumper. It's kind of nice because it's got this screw. You can unscrew it. You can screw other pieces to it. Uh, but it's just, the, it does the same thing that the old bumper does. Um, I even have an old bumper that I'll plug in. I have a limit switch, a potentiometer. We can try it, try it all plugged into the brain. Okay. So your PLTW curriculum that calls for, you know, potentiometers or lights or whatever, we'll still be able to, to do all that kind of stuff with the brain. Uh, okay. So I have a couple other things that I want to show you. I know you're not going to have, uh, but I do just want to show you if you do have the budget, if you've already ordered or if you haven't, or if you still have an opportunity, I would highly recommend purchasing a controller. Okay. For a couple of reasons, uh, but you need a controller and the uh radio receiver you know transmitter receiver so these two guys together the i think the the major selling point for these guys is that you can plug in the controller to your computer you can upload the program to the controller and the controller will then transmit the program to the brain so you could have a robot in the middle of the classroom you could have your controller connected to the computer, program it, send it, and then the and then play it, and the robot goes and does what it needs to do. You don't have to go and pick it up, bring it over to the computer, plug it in, unplug it, go take it over wherever. So if you do have the opportunity, um, I would highly recommend getting a controller and a uh, this because also another reason is you might want to do competition uh, and then you'll just, you'll have it. And you'll also, um, you might want to do some builds where they use the controller, where they push a button on the controller. That could be their input. Um, all kinds of different things you can do. It just offers you more flexibility. Okay. Enough of that. So I got my smart cables. Okay. Got my smart cables, got my motor, got my battery. Okay. Believe it or not. Um, the battery I uh, even does, I think even does a firmware update if I'm not mistaken. Um, cause you'll notice there's four, there's four leads. I think that some of those actually send data. I don't know. I, I really don't know all the technical specifications. I know the practical stuff. I know how to use this stuff. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's go ahead and plug everything in you say, Mark, where do I plug it in? It doesn't really matter. And it is kind of dummy proof. Okay. These guys plug in, like I said, it's like an old school phone jack. You just plug it in like that. They click and you're good. Then take the other end 
and find an open port, and you got a lot of them now. We got 21. There's 20 on the front, and there's one on the side. Uh, I don't, I don't know if that had like a specific reason or purpose that it's on the side, but uh, it's very convenient for uh, like putting your um, radio transmitter on. But you can, I think you can plug anything into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just plug this into 20. So I got a motor into 20. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in a second motor. Put it right there. Let's see. Let's keep everything in plain view, okay? Just like a mag magician, right? I'll plug that one into 19. Like I said, they can go in anywhere, but I'm just gonna plug them in right there. Just for funsies, okay? Uh, I got my, uh, my se little sensor here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into 18. Okay? So you're gonna wanna have all five, you're gonna wanna plug in all five motors and the optical sensor and any other accoutrement that you have anything else plug it in plug it all in okay then here here's something really cool now that we got everything plugged in let's just say let's say it's all attached to a robot and everything and i'm at a workstation i'm at a, at a workbench in my classroom and uh i don't know i'm experimenting with it i'm playing with it for hours and hours or uh, I'm going to work with it, and then the next class is going to come, and they're going to work with it, and the next class, and the next class, and the next class. And you're thinking, okay, so I have to have, like, batteries charge in, and then go grab one, and then unplug it, and then plug it in, and then whatever. And got... No. Guess what? You can plug it in, <laughs> and it'll charge and stay charged while it's plugged into the brain. Amazing. All right? So that I, I think that is really... Like I said, just the things. And so let me show you what I did to solve that problem on the old Cortex. I actually wired from their connector to a DC barrel. And then I just made sure that I got the exact right DC adapter to supply an even consistent, I think it's like 7.4 volts or something to this, uh, to this controller. All right, you can also run, and I'll have to try it again, but last time I tried, I was able to get old legacy motors to run with this brain. But if you have the, the, the V5 motors, if you have the smart motors, those are going to be better for you. They're going to they're gonna go a lot, get you a lot further. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to my computer screen view here. And what you want to do is go to Google as one does and type in VEX code V5 download. And then it's probably your first link. And so here you go. VEX code is free to use. And I, they have done such an excellent job at really uh, making their brand consistent across their products. So VexCode VR, if you haven't tried that yet, it's, a, it's amazing. Go to vr.vex.com, it's real fun. I have a lot of videos about it. Uh, it looks and feels very much like VexGo, okay? And VexCode Go is also uh, available online. It's at codego.vex.com, and that is also very convenient. Uh, and then look at what these platforms are available on. Look at this, Windows, Mac, on uh, iOS devices, on Androids. Uh, Vex IQ, Vex Code IQ is um, very much similar. And then you got Vex Code V5. Now, the uh, one that is not like the others, which will clue you in here, is that it says Pro. <laughs> um, this is gonna be mostly for your higher level uh, competition uh, stuff, uh, which I think, I'm not sure if you have to use VexCode Pro for competition or not. They may have uh, gotten it to where you can use VexCode V5 now, but it used to be you had to use this because there was certain stuff you had to do for the their um, their field controllers and stuff. But don't worry about VexCode uh, Pro right now, especially if you're a beginner. Just go ahead and use VexCode V5. 
I am not sure what the new curriculum uh, from PLTW calls for, if it calls for Vexcode V5 or Vexcode Pro. I really can't see why they would make you do Pro, but if they do, you might want to consider modification in using V5. All right. It works on a Chromebook. Like, holy cow. It works on a Chromebook. It does. I've used it. I've had students use it on a Chromebook programming their, their robot. Um, I am personally, I'm using a Mac right now. So I'll go ahead and click download for Mac. And I have already installed it. If you've ever installed anything before, it's no different. Um, if you're installing it on a district computer or, you know, compute, uh, a school computer, you know, you probably need to get your IT guy to come in and type in his password or whatever. It really um, doesn't take much more than that. And then it's on the computer and you're good to go. So let me go ahead and open V5, uh, Xcode V5. If my computer would cooperate with me, here we go. All right, so it's under Vex and it's behind my head here, Vex code V5. Let's get that open. And then I'm gonna plug in the brain here in a second. And like with most electronics these days, there are updates that are needed. And so I think this brain, I probably haven't used this brain in a while now because again that crazy worldwide thing that was been causing problems everywhere of which i will not speak uh i haven't been i haven't used this brain in a while so uh it's probably going to need a firmware update but i hope it does because i want to show you that so anyway i'm going to plug in the brain let's go ahead and get that on the screen there's my stuff make sure you plug it in the correct direction little USB cables are a little fragile. Maybe fragile isn't the best word, but just make sure you, you don't jam it in there. You plug it in appropriately. Okay, I'll go ahead and push the power button to wake our guy up. And notice right above there, immediately I have an orange brain, okay? So I don't have a controller connected or it would show the controller, Notice that we have links for tutorials. I can change the language. So if you wanted it in Espanol, you could do that. Uh, here on the brain, it's going to tell me that it's out of date. Dun, dun, dun. If you click out of date, it says, okay. Don't unplug or turn it off, right? So just like almost any device that's updating, it says, don't mess with it, we're updating it. And it is literally gonna update the firmware on the, on the motors. There's actually firmware on these motors. Uh, I think there's even firmware on the battery. Um, there's firmware on the sensors. It's gonna do it all. Um, and I'm going to show you how, once it's done, if you forgot a device, it's really not going to be that big a deal. Watch, I'll show you. So we're almost done. It looks like it's done on the brain over here. It's probably going to tell me on uh VEX code that I need to turn it off and turn it back on again or something. Um, oh, here it is. It's going again. So it might do that a couple times. Um, let me tell you something. I didn't explain the flanges. Okay. So if you look at the side here, oops, if you look at the side here, you'll see those little holes down there. Those are not screw holes. Those are like basically just pin holes. Uh, and those flanges have uh, little pegs that correspond to those holes. And so you can stick the flange on the side of the brain which then gives you a place to screw the brain down onto the uh, structural pieces. The short flanges are for the other side, uh, the short end of the, of the robot, of the brain. I almost just always don't use the flanges and I usually attach the brain through these actual screw holes on the back, which are the same threading and size 
as the screws you have now, the regular Allen screws you have now. Oh yeah, also, no more motor screws and regular screws. The motor screws for the smart motors are just the regular screws. So you're not going to have any different ones. Now, if you buy a competition kit or, or if you buy a full kit with new structural pieces, they have converted over to star or T, um, you know, Torx bits. So they're like, um, I don't know. They have a little star head on them instead of a, instead of a hex Allen key. The, um, you're, you really shouldn't do it, but if you have a Torx, uh, tool and you have, and you run come across an Allen, they're actually kind of the same size. You can actually use a Torx to get an Allen off. So if you buy some Torx stuff and you have Torx tools, uh, in any of your old Allen, uh, hardware gets, gets in there, um, you won't be totally dead in the water. You'll be able to, to go to, to still, uh, get things taken apart. Okay. So it says turn brain off. Okay. So I'll push and hold the power button on the brain it turns off and then I'm going to click. Okay. Oh, uh, it says turn off and then on. Okay. So now I'll turn it back on. Okay. I didn't have to unplug the power or anything like that. Like you would have had to do with the old cortex. There we go. And now it is green up the top. And when I click on it, it says up to date. Very, very, very nice. Okay. Well, cool. That's pretty easy so far, right? I mean, not too bad, not too bad, not too bad, but let's say, um, I'm on, I unplug, let's say I'm off doing my stuff, got the thing, you know, going. And then I realize, oh, I actually had a radio. I wanted to plug into it. Oh shoot. You know, and I just did a firmware update. I get, I don't, I don't know. Maybe that should have been plugged in, plug it into any port. The brain knows what you plugged into it. And look at what that says. The radio firmware requires an update. Would you like to proceed? I'll take the cover off and I will say, okay, I will proceed. The brain keeps the firmware that's necessary for all the devices. It keeps it on it. So if you go grab a motor or even like a controller and I plug in a controller now and it's like, Hey, this is, it's got an old firmware version on it. We need to update it. The brain does it for you. You don't have to run over to your computer and plug it in. So now I'll plug in this controller and it's probably going to tell me it needs a firmware update. I don't know. It might, there it is. I click okay. And now it's going to update the firmware on the controller just like that. I cannot tell you how much nicer it is to use V5, um, than using Cortex. I've used V5 for my competition teams. I have not used V5 for my autom my, my element, um, middle school, uh, automation robotics class, but I did get approved to upgrade because PLTW is upgrading to V5. And so I am super excited because now I'm going to get to use this stuff, uh, for my class, which I've already used. And I know that it is, it works beautifully. Um, the number of issues and, and problems that I've had with cortex and having to unplug and plug and update firmware and reset and do all this stuff. I have not had that same experience with V5, not even close. All right. So I think you're really going to like it. All right, let's plug it back into the computer. Let's just do a quick program just so we can see how it works and that it works. All right. And so now I have the brain plugged in. Now notice I don't have, it doesn't say controller yet. And that's because I haven't configured the devices. So the first thing that we do in VEX code, the same as what we did in robot C and I'm sorry, I had to say that word. I know that many of you just cringed when I said robot C, 
I personally liked Robot C. I still like it. I like programming in C. I think it's fun, but that's I'm just a weirdo. So I'll click on the devices button. Notice it looks just like it looks just like the plug that you use to plug those devices in. Obviously, that's intentional, right? So now I'll go ahead and click add a device. And I'm going to add the stuff that I have. Okay, so I had a motor in port 20. And I could name it if I wanted to, or I could just leave it motor 20. Uh, I could reverse it right here if I needed to, or I can always go back and do that later if I feel like I messed up. I click done. Let me add another motor. And did you notice? Did you notice that on the left? A bunch of new commands popped up. Maybe reverse the video and look. The commands over here are related to the configuration of the robot. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna have blocks or commands in here that don't have anything to do with the hardware that you have plugged in. Uh, let's set the other motor up. The other motor up we had was in 19. I'll click done. And then we had a, an, I have an inertial, yeah, inertial sensor in 18. I'll click done. And if you misconfigure this, the bro the brain is actually pretty smart. It will tell you usually if you've got something wacky or wrong. Uh, I'll add a device. I'm going to add a controller. And it does say you need to set up the buttons to see what they do. Uh, I could say I could make like X button. X and B makes motor go motor 20 go forward and backward. I'll just click OK or done. Chances are you won't have a controller. That's okay. Now I'll go ahead and click download. So it's going to download that configuration to the robot. I might ask you to save it. You might need to change the location. I'll go ahead and say save. All right. So now it's downloaded onto my, onto the brain. Let me close this little tray right here and then go ahead and show you the brain going on. Okay. So it switched to this screen and notice it says VEX code project at the top. I don't know if you can see that it might be kind of small, but over here in the project name, I can say, I, I can call this project Mark, right? And I have up to eight different slots I can store that project in. So I'm going to store it in slot one and I'll call it Mark and then I'll click rename any change that I make. Just like with the Cortex, if I want that change to go over to the brain, I have to click download. So I'll click download. Notice that it changed. And now it says my name, Mark, as the program. And if I were to unplug this from the computer and like say, go back to the home screen, there it is. Again, it's small, but that's my program. It says Mark. So I can just tap on it. And now I can run my program by pushing play. I don't have any blocks or commands, but I did configure the controller so that if I push that X button, the motor goes and there it is. And of course I could unplug the, the, the controller. It's wireless. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do a program though. Something a little bit more interesting. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and take and say spin motor 20 forward. Uh, then let's put a wait for one second and then we'll say stop motor 20 and then let's go to the looks area and we'll print on the brain. We'll say it's done like that. All right. Um, I'm going to be tempted to click run, but if I click run, it's just going to run the program that's already on the brain. I just made a change. So I need to click download, download to the brain. I could push run on the brain or I could push run up here in the program. Okay. I'll push run on the brain. And then it's done. Look at that. So easy people. All right. It really is just that easy. And if you're like, yeah, yeah, but blocks, blocks, this blocks that. Okay. Don't worry. Check this out. You can click 
the uh, the code tags right here, and it's in Python, or you can switch it to C++. And if you liked that video, I would appreciate it. You give it a like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see videos like this a little bit sooner than everybody else and maybe get some exclusive members only perks, go ahead and click that join button to see what that's all about. I really appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next